You know, the, um, the, the Gospel of John is unique among the four Gospels in that it does not have the institution of the Eucharist at the Last Supper, what we're talking about tonight. And uh, it, of course, has a long chapter, chapter 6, about the Eucharist, perhaps the most developed of all four Gospels, but not here. John has a totally different take. And I love the way he sets it up for us. He says it's the Feast of Passover. You heard in the first reading what that meant. And it was his hour to pass from the world to the Father. So within a day, within less than a day, he would be dead. He loved his own in the world, John says, and he loved them to the end. And then, as if that wasn't setting the stage enough, he says, and the devil had already induced Judas to betray him, to hand him over. And it's in the, that context that Jesus gets up, takes off his outer garments, and begins to wash their feet, something that only slaves did. And we can understand well how shocked they would have been, the solemnity of it all. I mean, here they are at the last supper they would ever have, the last meal they would ever have with him. They didn't maybe know that, but Jesus certainly knew that. And here he is washing their feet. You can understand Peter saying, no, 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 it can't be, Lord, it can't be. You're too good for this. But, and Jesus was, he says, I know Peter, you don't understand now. You don't understand, but you will. And you know what? I think, I hope I will. Peter did, you know. He gave his life to the end. He understood at the end. He was able to, he had a lot of false starts like all of us. And they're well attested in the scriptures. You know, no one sins are more publicized than Peter's, right? His weaknesses. But in the end, he was able to do it. He did understand. And that's what I think, that's why John puts this here for us. Not the institution of the Eucharist he dealt with later in the Gospel, but he wants us to say, you can be free. You can be free to serve even the worst people. You can be free to serve your enemies. You, God wants us to have a freedom that goes so far beyond uh, just the freedom to choose something, to choose this color car or that color car. What kind of freedom is that? You know, if you could afford it, what, what is it? No, the freedom He wants is to have us to be able to be in service of all. This is then, and I love the fact that it's connected on this night with the Eucharist. Because as we receive, he puts us himself in the Eucharist. Every time we celebrate the Eucharist, it's God. Yes, the priest says the words, but it is God that enters and becomes the body, soul, divinity of Christ that you and I receive. He puts it in our hands. He puts it in our tongue. He puts it in the hands of people who care and people who don't. People distracted and people who, who, who could care less. How, how is that? Why would he do that? Because he wants us eventually to understand that that's the way to our freedom. That for Peter it was, and for us it is. We can be free, but we have to be free the way Jesus was free. Everything. He knew it was the end. He knew they already at the table was the guy who was gonna, had already sold him out. was going to sell him out with a kiss late, just a, a few hours later. Already there, getting his feet washed, like everybody. You know. But Jesus is, is free to, to enter in. <laughs> Friends, this kind of freedom is our birthright because it's what God can accomplish in us. You know, you'll know, I'll know, we'll know we're coming close to Christ when our service of the least of our brothers and sisters becomes more and more generous. And not, not because you have to, but because you want to. Because you love to do it. Because Jesus wanted to. He wasn't doing it. He wanted to do one last thing for them. He'd already fed them. What else could he do? You know? 
And imagine that when you're that free that you want to do everything for the other person. Everything. Friends, that's the mystery that we're, we're celebrating tonight. And as you and I, not just this night, but whenever we receive communion, friends, that's the promise that can set us really free. Americans talk about freedom all the time. But real freedom has to do with, with living in complete service for the other. That's why Jesus kept saying it over and over. The one who wants to be the greatest has to be the servant of all. It's not some moral trickery. It is the way of freedom. Can you imagine how free it would be if you if you never felt revenge again? You never wanted to be revenge on the enemies that did you wrong? Imagine that. I mean, some people are like enslaved to their uh, to the anger that they feel, right? Some of us here probably. You know. So uh, so this is the this is the joy of tonight. Let the Lord wash your feet, so to speak, in the Eucharist. He's going to put himself right in your hand or on your tongue. Um, receive him. Let him set you free. Let him make you the person you were meant to be when he created you.